did you want me to do? Hi, welcome to the Writing Biz. This is where we take care of the business of writing. Our topic today is going to be writing your business plan. We all like to tell stories, right? Well, a business plan is just another story. It's your business's story. And it had, just like all other stories, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you have to follow along to get the whole story till you get to the end. And that's what kind of what your business plan is. Um, today, I have with me uh, Nina Amir and Charlotte Pierce. And I'm going to go ahead and let Nina introduce herself. Thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't sure you were ready okay. for me. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure I was ready either. <laughs> so, um, uh, thank you for having me here. And I am uh, known as the Inspiration to Creation Coach. And I'm the author of two books. So, I, I was grabbing them. I was like unprepared. <laughs> Bad thing for an author. Uh, so, I'm the author of the Author Training Manual, which is all about writing business plans. So that's what we're talking about today. And I'm also the author of How to Blog a Book. And uh, I am an author coach and a um, a blog to book coach and a blog coach and uh, a results coach and I've also uh, been an editor and I um, also am a consultant and an editor of business plans and book proposals because of course the business plans we're talking about are book proposals uh, to a great extent or they can be and besides that I'm a blogger I have four different blogs uh, I um, I'm the founder of Write Nonfiction in November, um, which is a challenge to write a book in 30 days, a nonfiction book in 30 days. It's also known as the National Nonfiction Writing Month. So um, that's really it. I work with I work with authors at all levels to help them, uh, you know, take their ideas um, and to build them into books and into careers, and to help them become authorpreneurs or blogpreneurs or writerpreneurs, so that they can actually uh, make a living and build businesses around what they're doing. Wonderful, wonderful. Because uh, we we need your help. <laughs> 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 and Charlotte, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I'm sort of here to help help you out. I don't want to. I'm, I'm also, like I was telling you in the green room, a business plan slacker. So I'm here to learn too. <laughs> I'm a uh, an independent publisher in the Boston area, uh, co-president of the Independent Publishers of New England, and I do uh, book coaching as well. And, could have starting out in that, but I've got my own uh, imprints, and um, I've got my hand in just about everything. Too many <laughs> things. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. You're just a busy lady. Um, Nina, I have read your book, um, and I, I will say it's, like I had told you earlier, it's um, written in a way that really gets you to go through the thought processes on um, building your business plan, and I think that is the very beginning thing that we need to talk about is how to open up your mind to getting in there and writing a business plan and what are the very beginning thoughts you should have and how you could kind of structure it off that. So first would you tell me why a writer would need a business plan? Sure. So most writers don't think they need a business plan. They think that you know if they have an idea for a book that that's the starting point. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you get an idea, it's not necessarily uh, a marketable idea, a viable idea, one that's going to sell. And the only way that our ideas, once they're in book form, are going to get read is if they're marketable. And so we have to treat our ideas the same way the publisher would treat them. And that it doesn't matter whether you're going to self-publish or whether you're going to traditionally publish. And this is the same even if you were going to write an article. We have to treat all our ideas um, like products. And so we have to examine them and determine whether they are viable, whether they're going to sell, whether somebody is going to actually pick them up and take them to the register, which means buy them or read them. right? So even if it's in a magazine, they have to pick up the magazine right? and they have to take it home with them. So, uh, so a business plan helps us determine whether 
what we have, what we've created in our mind is actually something that will sell. And it takes us through uh, the process, the same process that a publisher, let's, let's just stick right now with book ideas. Um, mm -hmm. It takes us through the same process that a publisher would go through. And that is to determine whether the idea has, um, has a market, whether there are readers out there and enough readers who would want this and need it and who they are and how many of them there are. And then it uh, takes us through a process of determining what the competition is and whether um, that competition can, um, uh, whether that competition indicates that the book will sell and whether it's unique and necessary. And then um, the business plan also takes us through a process um, of of uh, determining whether the structure is sound and whether there's enough content and again whether it's unique compared to the competition and different and then it also takes you through a process of actually evaluating yourself or from the publisher's perspective let's just say it goes through a process of evaluating the writer does the writer have what it takes to write the book and to actually produce it are they an expert or do they have the qualifications to write their novel if it's a novel and and do they have what it takes to help sell the book do they have a platform we talk a lot about author platforms so do they have what it takes to help sell the book a foundation to help market the book and then do they have a plan to help sell the book? Do they have that marketing or promotion plan? All of that is in there in this business plan. But beyond that, um, if if you do it really well, and if you don't just think about you know selling to a traditional publisher, let's say, um, if you're doing it on a broader scale for yourself or as an independent publisher, you actually can take this business planning much broader, and you can plan for your career. You can plan out all the other books you're going to write. You can brand yourself. You can think about you know how am I going to you know where am I going in my you know from this book to the next book to the next so that actually all your books make sense in in the scheme of what you're writing and when you're going to write it and you can build a business around those books so that you make money as a writer um, you know there's just so much you can do if you start with the business plan as soon as the light bulb goes off yeah I think that I think that's really important I mean it's you have to have some type of structure so that you know not only where you're going but if you get sidetracked away back to get back on track so that you can you know keep going forward because we know sometimes life throws curves at us one of the things that you also brought up was um, to consider how committed you are to the process and I think that's a really important point to make uh, some people may just want to do an ebook so that they don't do a lot of personal interactions like they might have to do more with a hardcover you know a um, um, print book what, what do you think about that do you think that's uh, for, there for serious consideration yeah and you know I talk about that in the author training manual one of the first chapters um, talks about um, really defining for yourself what success means to you and what um, your goals are because um, the publishing industry has its own definition of success, which is book sales. But every person has their own definition of success, and um, and, and along with that is, uh, it, or comes, your commitment. Because if all you care about is writing a book of your heart and selling it to your family and friends, and if you're going to be happy selling 200 copies over the lifetime of your book then the commitment you're making to your book is going to be very different than if your goal is to write a best-selling book and to have it sell you know thousands of copies um, then your commitment is going to have to be very different and if you want to build a business around your book again your commitments very different now you have to be an entrepreneur and you have to have a a marketing plan that is going to support selling all those books so all of this has to come into play and the, the authors that are the most successful are sacrificing and they're spending an enormous amount of their time on creating successful books so you know and success, successful careers so yes you have to at the very beginning make a decision about about the level of commitment you have to this yes. yeah, uh, I would one, think of, that, one of our um, speakers at our at our IFNI conference it, 
it was David Godine, who's a kind of the last of the gentleman publishers in the Boston area, and he said either you're you're publishing or you're privishing. You, know, you have to do, you have to make a decision. Um, right. You know, are you writing for yourself and just a hobby, or, or are you trying to get a message out? Exactly, yeah. Charlotte. Yeah, exactly. Last night I did um, a teleseminar for my, um, I have a nonfiction writers university and I had a speaker, um, uh, Rochelle Melander, and she talked about it in those exact terms, hobby or professional. She said it was a shift you have to make and I totally agree. If you want to be a hobby writer, then that's one thing. And that's but if okay. you want to be a yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> Just like I always say, if you want to write the book of your heart, fine. But if you want to write a book that sells, there's yeah. a different thing. And so that be, that means you have to decide to be a professional writer. And professional writers carve out time, and they sit their butt down in the chair every day. And if the day goes by and they haven't done what they said they were going to do in terms of working on their book, then they give up sleep or they give up TV yeah. or they give up something because they're willing to sacrifice because it's a prof it's their profession it, they are professional up, yeah. writers I'll give up everything except rowing right <laughs> <laughs> well I think I think Laura that's wrote me a little uh, time management plan oh. and, and uh, she but I, I completely blew it out of the water because I, I have to do my rowing when they have a session. <laughs> um, I think that the, the business plan, too, is a good way when uh, a writer is making that transition from doing it as a hobby to trying to do it in a more um, uh, serious way. I think that having that business plan really helps them kind of get their ducks in the row. Because I, w I would think that you know, a lot of ex writers don't have a lot of business experience. So to have it something that you and it's not something you write overnight. Let's make that clear. That it's something that you it takes time to develop. Well, I do. Yeah, I mean, I do an eight-week course on it, mm -hmm. and you know, over eight weeks, we 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 talk about all the different sections, and they're working on those. And you know, in about eight weeks, you could get a good a good draft of of your business mm -hmm. plan done. Um, and of course, a business plan for an indie publisher doesn't have to be fine-tuned. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, you know, it doesn't have to uh, uh, be edited to a high polish. But in a, if you're going to send it off to a publisher, now that's a different story. Then you you need to get it professionally edited, possibly, or at least edit it yourself and proofread, have a proofread, all those things. But but it does give you um, an idea of of the commitments you have to make and the sacrifices you might have to make because as you go through each section you're going to start to see um, you know what is it I need to do especially when you get to the platform section um, and especially when you have the full map of your um, of your uh, book, you know, when you have the structure of your book, and do when you start thinking about, you know, how long will it take me to write this, and um, uh, you know, th those sort of things. You know, you can, y you'll begin to be able to have an action plan, an action plan for my promote, you know, pre-promotion, which is your platform building, an action plan for writing my book, an action plan for getting my business plan done and polished into an agent, or you know, any of those things. Can I ask you a question? This is just a little bit of an aside. When you when you develop your business plan, do you share that with the important people in your life, like your husband or family or whatever, so that they can see what the process is going to look like, so they're prepared for that? You can, for sure. Because I something came up a couple weeks ago um, on one of the shows, and I was just thinking about that. It's, I think it's a good idea, you know, to keep them in the loop so that they kind of know what's coming up. Charlotte's put up a comment from Pamela Barway. Hi, Pamela. And um, she wanted to know if you could recommend any resources, books, webinars, podcasts, videos, etc. A deal of detailing the process of developing a plan targeted to a larger audience. And I would say, first of all, your book. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'll hold it up again. The author training manual is, basically takes you through a whole process to build a business plan for your book and for yourself, whether you, no matter how you publish. Um, if you want something specifically on a book proposal, although my, my book does teach you how to write a book proposal, but if you want sp something specifically on a book proposal, the best book out there is Michael Larson's book, um, How to Write a Book Proposal. 
Um, I also, on my website, I have um, something called the Easy Schmeasy Book Proposal <laughs> Template, which... Is that, um, free? is that a free item or is it? No, it is not. It costs $14.99. Oh, that's how um, much. No, it's not much, and it's also um, it's available for free if you join my nonfiction writers university. Um, it's also for free if you take my course, um, Author Training 101, which is a home study course, which takes you through um, the author training manual process. So I call it the author training process, and um, Author Training 101 will take you through that process. Um, so if you just uh, go, uh, go to authortraining101.com, you will find that. So those are some resources. Um, Michael Larson's book is wonderful. Do you have uh, some some hooks to get people who are just really have an antipathy for writing business plans started? Like, So I recognize that I need to do one, and I just, like, what do I do first? You know, I just get a blank piece of paper and start writing? Or well, there are exercises. In the author training manual, there are actually exercises. So mm -hmm. that's the great thing. There are training exercises. So I suggest that because it helps to have questions to answer and things to do to spur your mind, you know, so that you, yeah. you know, and the template, the template is helpful because it's not a blank piece of paper, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I actually have an ebook coming out in the next week, I hope, um, that actually tells you each section what to write. In, in it. It's called the, the nonfiction book proposal demystified. But in any case, I, I would say first, I think the biggest problem with writers is they think that <laughs> they, they <laughs> the problem is that, that <laughs> there we, are many think problems. Business, we think that business yeah, we think that business isn't creative. We hear business and our yes. eyes glaze over. Oh my and, God. Yes. You know, Ted Koppel called it the Mego factor. My eyes glaze over. <laughs> my, hus my husband, so I learned about business and, and all of this from my husband, who is, um, you know, a, a VP finance, chief financial officer type person for startup companies. And, um, uh, and so, um, he used to, he'll talk about finance and business and all that stuff, and seriously, I get the Miko factor. I'm like, I, I just, you know, zone out, not there. <laughs> so I totally get it. And, but more than that, I think as writers, we really are in the creative zone, and we think business, this is just not us. So, Charlotte, the thing is to remember is that the business process is creative. It really is. Okay. And, yes. and so approach it, <laughs> yes, yeah, so approach it as... I'm going to, to do this process in order to create the best book I can create. Yeah. And, and as I'm, a publisher, I, I think, I mean, it, it applies in a, in a larger, or in a more, you know, with more little nodes to my different books and imprints that I've got. But yes. I, I was thinking it might be a good thing for a publisher to give to an author, too. Yes. You, yeah. They need to be your partner in the, in the process. Yeah, they would add structure to it. Pu we have a want, from Matthew. Yeah, publishers want good business partners, right? They want they mm -hmm. want an author to who who is um, savvy enough to create a product that's marketable and who can help sell it. And sure. and that's what you want. That's what you as a publisher want. And so you want them to come with you with a business plan that proves that their idea is marketable and that they're going to help be a good they're gonna help sell it right and so you as the publisher Charlotte need to <laughs> embrace this and so what what yeah. you want to see is that if you can um, begin by describing the market and getting comfortable with who are the readers and what do they need and how many of them are there out there and then go to okay so what other books out there are like that like this uh -huh. book that I want to write and then how if I examine those what light bulbs go off for me that help me improve my idea help me write a better book Book, right yeah. see this is the creative part of it so if I know my writer my readers I can start to think and my light bulbs can start going off this is the creative part what do they need and what do they want and how can I apply that knowledge to my idea and improve mm -hmm. my idea now look at all the other books that have written what did they leave out what didn't they do what can I do better than them how can I improve my idea this is creativity right, right. This and is this Absolutely. If you give your author something like that, a checklist like that, then they might come up with some ideas 
that augment your own skills as a publisher. I can That's see right. that. You know, they might right. have ideas that it raises everyone's boat. So. Right. That's that's one of the things I found writing business plans for, for businesses outside of writing is that as you go through the process and you start to really think about who your, mar who your market is, your audience, how you're going to contact them uh, as far as budgeting and everything, all the different things that you go through, you find out so much about yourself and how you're going to do business and what's intuitive to you and what's not, which leads you to where, you know, this is the, knowing what sections of your business that you're going to need help with. It really is. It's a wonderful process to go through. And I think, that, I think what scares people really is the words business plan. Right. So, you know, I know you have a question there from somebody who wants to know what goes into a business plan. Yes. Should we yeah. answer that? Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, so let's answer Matthew's question. And I'm going to answer it in a way that um, is very... Um, easy makes it easy for um, everyone and it also answers your question Charlotte in terms of you know that blank paper <laughs> so there are um, when I when I go through this I go through um, I talk about uh, my book goes through nine steps but the first step is something that's really just more for you so so if we we take it to eight steps um, they really are are very simple so the first one I talk about, know what your book's about and why someone would want to read it or buy it. So that's the first thing that needs to go in there, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's all about an overview, and that's what call, it's called in a book proposal. It's called the overview. It's an overview of your book. It, it will include a pitch, and if we break this down into very simple things that go into this section, it's a, it's a pitch, meaning like 50 words that describe your book, you know, uh, just a sentence or two that describe your book. So you have the title, a brief statement. Then you can have a paragraph that is a s brief summary, like a synopsis of your book, and then a list of benefits. How is somebody going to benefit from this book? Yep. What's the value in it? And and I mean this even for novelists. Okay, your novel or has some benefits. Yes, yeah. all of them. Just, there is some yeah. benefit in this book. Yeah. Right? So you, you know, need to I, know. I, w I just shared a, an email with Laura earlier about it with, by, to a new author that I, you know, I could tell she was just so consumed with her book and she just loved the idea that this book was going to be published. And, and so I asked her these questions and she, she said so, some of the same ones because I thought, you know, she's got to have an idea in order. She's, she should be able to tell me who's going to buy her book. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is the first thing. So the overview just has that in it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, if you were to write it up for a book proposal, it's going to be finessed. You're going to have more there. But those are the basic elements. So then the next thing would be to analyze how many people really might buy your book. This is the markets. Now you might have more than one market, but basically you're going to describe your describe your reader so it's almost like doing a profile of your reader and then determining how many of those readers that there are in the world go to Google or somewhere like that and and discover how many people like that exist you can't just say people like me you have to say there are 20,000 people out there you know in the world or 200,000 people in the world you know who will buy mm -hmm. my potentially buy my book so the next thing is to compare the competition and discover if your idea is unique and necessary. Okay, so this is what I talked about already. This is a competitive analysis where you're going to actually uh, see who else has written books like yours and figure out how you can do a better job than they have. Okay, you want your book to be to fill a hole, as we say on the bookstore shelf. So you somewhere, you know, somebody's searching for a book that hasn't yet been written, and you want to write that book whether it's a novel or whether it's nonfiction. Okay? The next thing is to examine the structure of your book. Basically, this is, you know, I usually talk about doing a mind map, and when you're done with the mind map or, you know, any kind of brainstorming process you like to do, you then create a table of contents for your book. That's the structure of your book. So you come up with the structure. The next step is to decide if your content um, for your book matches your vision. So remember we did the overview and you decided um, you know, what your book was going to be about. Now you're going to check, 
does my structure of the book that I just created, my table of contents, does it match that initial vision I had? Or have I gone off on some tangent? Or has something changed? So you just check that everything is, is coming together. And um, you also then go ahead and you write um, a chapter by chapter synopsis. And I, I suggest that novelists do this too. Most novelists just write a synopsis. But I suggest that you write a chapter by chapter synopsis, so a description of every chapter so you know what's going in it. This becomes a phenomenal writing guide. Yep, Charlotte? Does that have, can that change? <laughs> yes, it may change. I love your raising your hand. <laughs> um, Yes, it could change as you write, but it but it's a really good starting point. And yeah. and and if you have your overview and you have your your um uh you have your overview and you have your um, table of contents and you have this chapter by chapter synopsis, this is a phenomenal writing guide. Those three parts, really really okay. good writing guide. If you can't do that, are you just journaling or something? Possibly, yeah. Because <laughs> you don't know what because you don't know what you're writing about. Writing about, yeah. You have to know what you're writing about, right? Yeah. The definition of a book, yeah. Yeah. Complete okay. idea. Okay. Okay. So very quickly, the last sections. Um, where are we? Um, okay. The next one is discover ways to brand yourself and earn more money. So typically, this is called spinoffs, and sometimes you might mention this early on in your in your book proposal or business plan. Spinoffs are sequels or series you might do, right? So this is I love this part. This is where you're brainstorming other books you might write so that you can actually brand yourself or make more money with your books because you have one book that's following another. So for instance, how to blog a book had a chapter in it on building a business plan for your book. Well, that's this book. <laughs> this right. whole book is that chapter expanded upon, mm -hmm. right? Now there's a chapter in this book that is the prelude to another book I want to write. So see, you can begin to plan your books out with future books in, a, in, in mind. And that's a wonderful thing to do. The other thing is, um, and this would not go in your book proposal if you were going to actually propose a book to a publisher, but in the process of this, you can be thinking about the courses you want to offer, the, um, well, and it might go in there. You might say, you know, I'm going to offer this course and that's going to help me build my platform or what, you know, market the book. But Here's where you actually can think, I'm going to, you know, write this, build a course, or I'm going to speak, or I'm going to do all these different things that are going to help me build my business and my brand. Okay, uh, number eight is, or in this case seven, because we skipped one step, um, is to weigh whether you're the best person to write this book, and whether you're the best person to write this book now. This is all about platform. So here's where, you know, kind of the rubber meets the road because you either have built platform, which is, um, you know, people who know you, love you, trust you, um, and will run out and buy your book when you hold it up and say, my book has been published, please go buy it. Um, and that's all about, you know, what you've done in the world to create visibility. Right. And, you know, you need to do that. And if you haven't done it, it may not be time now to publish your book because, you're going to have trouble selling it. Yeah, we've and hit on that several times. I mean, you, if it's better just to hold off publication than to rush in there and not have your platform because you, you could actually, by building the platform as you're trying to sell your book, it can cause almost a desperation that people will notice right. and uh, it'll work against you. Right. And so the last thing is to gauge if you make a good publishing partner or indie publisher, and that has to do with your um, public, your promotion plan or marketing plan, which is based on your platform. And so, you know, you're gauging if, if you're a savvy publisher, if you're, if you're ready to be published, um, whether a publisher is going to want you based on whether you have that platform and a good promotion plan to put on top of it. So that's all the stuff that goes into a publishing, um, into a business plan. I talked really fast. <laughs> no, but you did a great job. You covered a lot of ground there. Like yeah, I said, there's no way so we specific. Could... Yeah, it's nice. We, there's we no way to the whole more. thing. Yeah, go right ahead. If you want to take any, I don't just go no. Ahead. I'll take questions. I saw you had yeah. something up there, but I couldn't. I didn't get the focus okay. on. It. I know this Pamela had asked. Um, where was it? Uh, Pamela asked about resources for non-publishing, but then she said she saw the one I had put up in the feed on the right brain business plan 
by Jennifer Lee, which is a, a good place to start. That's I tried the, the Right Brain business plan myself several years ago for a different project, and it helped me with getting kind of the creative side under control and what I wanted to do, but honestly, I had to do a formal business plan for the nuts and bolts, so keep that in mind. It's a great way to start and to, to get the processes going so that you can understand what you're going, what direction you're going into, but really, you do kind of need that nuts and bolts formal part. Um, to cover, you know, your financing and things like that. Yeah, yeah and that's a whole other part. That there's, I didn't even talk about that. There's a whole section on resources needed to complete your book, which is, um, you know, used to be included in most book proposals. It's not always in there anymore, but that's a whole other part of your business plan, which has to do with how much money do you need Right. to get your book up and running and do you need to crowdfund and all of that but anyway let's there were, there were some travel expenses things like that you may need to travel somewhere to research I mean there's a lot of things that uh, can fall under that resources that you may immediately not be thinking of right so it's definitely something you need to take time to consider right mm -hmm. what was that other question will you put a plug in for publicity hound that's how I found out about Nina <laughs> <laughs> yeah the publicity oh, no. hound is great she's good I love the publicity hound. Oh, here's another one. How does did we answer this one? No. no. How does a fiction writer use a new and fancy platform? That they paid a lot. Well, I don't understand that part of it. I think that what she means is, um, you know, when you farm it out to to a agency that says that they're going to, you know, that requires a subscription or something. Or do they mean that they paid a bunch of money to get like a blog or a website up? I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe Terrence could. Um, my stream's not updating. I'm glad yours is, Charlotte, because for some reason mine isn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm but, getting but I, Good for you. I, I would like to mention, though, that um, fiction writers don't think they need business plans, and they don't think they need book proposals, and it's not true. And they can they can sell a whole lot more books by um, by creating a business plan and by um, being prepared to turn in a really knockout um, book proposal to a publisher. That's I don't think we mentioned that earlier in the show and I meant to, but that's one thing that the business plan can do for you besides being a business plan on its own. You can also transform it into your book proposal, or if you are a um, a freelance writer or a blogger looking to monetize, you can transform it into a client pitch and all different other things. But once you have those thoughts, you have an idea of exactly what you're doing, why, and how you're getting it done, it opens up a lot of possibilities on how you can use that information. It's a great thing to do for a blogger. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. you know, we know we have my book, How to Blog a Book, but. Um, you know, I don't even talk that much in there about that, but if you start out with um, your business plan for a blog, you can you can plan out, you know, okay, I'm going to blog a book on my blog, and then I'll continue blogging, and I'm going to create courses and membership sites and all these different things on my blog so that I'll monetize my blog, and, you know, it can become a really extensive business plan for a blogger. Right. And I know a lot of people that are bloggers that, you know, they'll plan out the entire year's blogs. And, I mean, they may even pepper it with some different ones that things come up, you know, different changes mm -hmm. in tech or whatever. But plan out, and, and that's basically a business plan for their blog if they do that. And they figure out how much money they need to make, and then they can put in their advertising and everything. So, yeah, it, it's definitely a really valuable resource to have. Yep, for sure. Yep, yep. And another thing, too, is that you can revisit it. So let's say three, six months down the road, um, you can go back and look at your business plan and see what you have accomplished, see if you're on the road to where you thought you would be. And even later, a year, I mean, I, I know businesses that I've run, I've gone back a year, two, three, four, five years to the original business plan and reviewed that one, but then also reviewed my revision since then to see if there were any holes or any changes. Because if you don't do that, as a business person, you just kind of stagnate because you lose your vision and you use, lose your momentum. It, uh, I believe that to be true. Or you're just you'll just start ignoring your business plan. And right, right, and you get off track. Yeah, you get off track and, and forget some of the important details that you need to pay attention to. 
Well, I put the link to uh, Nina's book up, and I'm going to order it tonight. <laughs> well, good for you. Thank good you. Good for you, Charlotte. <laughs> I actually I, you know, was telling Nina, I ordered it months ago, and I, I skimmed through it when I ordered it, and I just started back reading it recently, so it was kind of serendipitous that she's on tonight. Okay. So, okay, so, so, so I see Terrence's comments, actually. I, I've got them up on my phone. Good for you. <laughs> wow. I got, not updated. I got, really, I got really techie here and noticed yeah. he was commenting. So Terrence has a, um, has a, I guess he's got a fancy site that with a blog on it that cost him a lot of money. And he wants to know how a fiction writer generates platform um, with a site, I guess, is what he's saying. So, so a fiction writer can generate um, platform in the same ways that um, nonfiction writers can, um, which it really is with blogging, um, is one of the best ways. I mean, of course, they can go out and speak and all those things, but I always tell novelists that the best thing they can do is to look at all the different, um, to use that one step where I talked about thinking about all the different books you're going to write and um, to consider what the themes are or topics in your novels and to then use that for branding. So he's spent a lot of, Terrence has spent a lot of money on a site and I would have said I hope you, <laughs> I hope you spend some time on your branding, Terrence, yeah. and so that you have um, actually, you know, thought about where you're going with your books and that your branding for your site and for your blog should have something to do with you as a novelist, with what you write about, what you believe in, how you want to be perceived by the world. And so that then on your blog, you're blogging on those topics so that people looking for your books, you know, looking for those topics, find your books so that all your books are, 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 you know, all, have some thread that's running through them that then runs through your blog as well. And then I also recommend to novelists that they take that thread, whatever that topic is, whether it's, um, I don't know, I always end up using um, the example that, you know, for instance, maybe you love orchids and you write about, um, maybe you write thrillers and, um, you know, at every crime scene there's an orchid uh, bloom that's left behind, right? So then you could um, write a little nonfiction book about orchids, um, you know, about orchid care or types of orchids or something like that. And now you can go out and you can actually try to get all your books carried by um, orchid shops and you might be able to speak at orchid festivals and orchid shows and those kind of things. And it gives you something else to talk about. Um, if you have a bigger cause that you're interested in that is in your books or a bigger topic, um, you know, something political or something like that, again, if you write something that's nonfiction or you blog about that topic, you then have an ability to go out and speak on that topic, which um, for, for novelists, you can sell a lot more books by being a speaker on a topic than I think you can ever sell by just going out and doing readings. So... That's usually yeah, what I suggest. Yeah, and there's there's a as a as a fiction writer, there's so much blog material that you can come up with. I mean, you can have um, like your characters speak individually. You can the the time period that you are um, your book is placed in. You can write about that. We know a lady who does it. You, there's just so much you can work with it. You can all use that all the material to uh, help build your platform. And I noticed Terrence said, my, my, for whatever reason, my thing finally came up. He said that um, supposedly a fiction writer needs a platform to use as a site to generate their publicity. That's, that's not real, that's kind of a complicated um, I think he's question, Terrence. I think he's confusing platform and, and, um, and as, an, as a concept and platform as a Software or something. I, or, yeah, you know, your platform kind of is your persona. It more than it is a platform. It's who you expertise. are. Well, yeah. it's more than yeah. that. Platform is based on. So, what, in talking about blogging, you know, you're wanting to share those blog posts, blog posts across all your networks, and um, the reason for that is to get visibility. Platform is all about visibility. So, when mm -hmm. I'm here talking to the two of you, so then I'm getting visibility to your audience, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I have my audience that I, I'm visible to via my blogging and my social network. So that's my platform. My platform is everyone who knows me 
um, because of what I do, right? So, and that's my built-in readership. That's the easiest definition is it's a built-in readership that's created by everything you do to be visible in your target market. But you increase that platform by doing other things, by, by, by having greater reach. So when I come on your show and I'm introduced to your platform, to your listeners and readers, then my reach extends beyond my, my little pocket of, of potential readers, right? My, my little platform. And, and it goes beyond that to yours. So that's reach. Or if, if I blog, uh, share a blog post on Twitter and somebody retweets it, then that's reach. It's going somewhere beyond the people who know me, right? And the more reach you have and the more people share what you've written and what you've said, the more um, authority you get. Authority is also your credentials, but it's also how much people are sharing and listening um, to you. And all of that combined becomes influence. So when you have visibility mm -hmm. in your target market and if you then get some reach and then you get some in some authority and then you get influence which is the combination of all of that then when you hold up a book and you say or you share something um, online or anywhere and you say you know please buy this or please take my course or whatever it is then um, what happens is people listen and people do what you say because you have influence. You're influential. That really is the crux of author platform. Here's an aha moment I had while you were talking. Is that as you're doing your business plan, you're defining who you are, what you want, how you're going to do it, you're developing information you can use to build your platform right there. Of course. You know, and I think that's, that's, uh -huh. Terrence, I think that'd be a really good thing for you to sit down and follow through that process so that you can see how all the pieces are going to work together and it can help you decide what platforms you are going to use to build your platform and um, put together a marketing plan that really is going to be more cohesive to what you're trying to do. Because what's happening. around your book. Right, because what you do is you, you determine um, who your readers are, so you know who they are, and you determine where they are. And so now you want to actually develop um, uh, platform. You want, to you want to work on developing platform in the areas where those people hang out. So if they're all on Facebook, then you want to be on Facebook. Right. Right. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it's it's such a broad subject, and it's kind of hard. You know, it's kind of hard to narrow it down in a very short amount of time. So, but I do, and I'm not saying this because just so that uh, Nina can sell her books. I'm really mm -hmm. telling you that it is valuable to sit there and go through that book and do it the way that she says to do it because if it opens up a way of thinking that you're probably not used to, and things that you may not even realize that you need to know to uh, get your book published if you want to be uh, successful at it. It really is. It's, it's a brilliant, brilliant. The cheap, the, mm -hmm. There are free and cheap ways of building your platform. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and until you have cash flow that will warrant an expensive site or a, you know, bells and whistles, there's a lot, lot you can do just on a shoestring that's very, very effective as long as your content is good. Well, too, and you just have to make up your mind that you're going to take the time to learn how to do it properly. Yeah, mm -hmm. just putting up a website is not going to solve, you know, I, I started as a, as a graphic designer, and I ran into this all the time. Somebody would put up a website, and then six months later, they're like, well, why isn't my website getting traffic? Well, what have you done to get the website traffic? Mm -hmm. but that, all comes in, that can all come into your business plan. Yep, yep. Yep, so, all of that. You know, when you say, you know, because, uh, you know, think about it this way. Every, every aspect of this is a mini business plan. So mm -hmm. when you say, I'm going to create um, a website, and a blog is a website. So for mm -hmm. those who don't realize it, a blog is a website. It's all you need. So you create a website or a blog, and, you know, you say, this is going to be my, my author website. And every author should have an author website. You know, and you say, this is my, my hub where I create great content and then I share it across different social networks. 
which is what you should be doing. That's like the first thing you should do to create platform. So you, for that to happen, you should have a plan. You should have a mini plan for my website. You know, for what do I do on my website? How do I create it? What goes on it? How will I then, um, you know, uh, take that uh, website and utilize it to the best of my ability so that I build platform? You know, mm -hmm. and when you get to the platform section of your business plan, you're looking at that and you're saying, what do I have in place? And that's partly what I talk about in the book is you, you take an accounting. Hey, do, you know, what social networks am I on? Which social networks should I be on? You know, the ones I'm on, how many followers do I have there? You know, at this time, okay, how many followers would I like to have? How am I going to go about getting those followers? And now you start tracking it month by month, just like you would in any other business, you know, business activity. I'm going to track what I'm, what am I doing, and what's working, so that I can see that I'm getting there. And people come to me and they say, "But you know, I don't want to spend all that time on the social networks. I don't want to spend the time on platform building. I want to write my books." Okay, then fine. Hire somebody. <laughs> that, that, right. <laughs> then figure it out. If you don't want to do it, then spend the money. Get a social networking expert to do it for you. It's really not that hard. Yeah, but there, there really is no not doing it anymore. No, because if you don't have a platform, you can't sell books. Period. And there's, there and are, there's an ocean of books out there. There are more people publishing books every single day than you can imagine. So that is right. And these and I, stories that we hear of people who just throw an ebook out there and make millions of dollars, it is one in a million. Yeah. One or two million. In, but if you build a platform. Yeah, yes, it, then you no way you can't books. sell books. Yeah, that's right. But this, these stories—that's what people are constantly talking about. Oh, but you know, I heard. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's one or two million, one or two authors in a million that just write a book and it just happens sure. to sell. Yeah. You mm -hmm. cannot go on that. You have. Well, to I'll say something as a consumer is how well that author platform works. Is I read a lot and I can't even tell you how many books I have bought because the link was there for me to buy them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just that I probably would not have bought those books if I was going to the bookstore. First of all, I always forget my list. Then I forget why I'm there anyways because I get involved while looking at all the pretty book covers. So, <laughs> but how many times I've clicked on a link because an author is building their platform, that link was there for me to buy their book. I don't even know how many times. I mean, a lot. A lot, like right. I, I'd be embarrassed to tell you how many. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, and that's a plan there. too. I mean, that probably is part of their their promotion plan, right? Mm -hmm. So when when the author training manual came out, I had a plan. You know, I had two blog tours planned, and um, you know, other subsequent plans. And you know, you look, you know, part part of your business plan is your promotion plan. That's a whole separate plan that's inside your plan. You absolutely, know, so, absolutely. So think about it. How many different plans come out of one business plan? Yep. And that's the interesting thing about the doing the business plan is that we, when you get involved in all those different tangents that come off of it and start developing those, it's just like you know the the light bulbs are popping and flaring, and you get so much more excited about your project. Right. As you well, do I, it. It's really yeah. a motivational type thing. Yeah. Well, I start with most people when I work with my clients. I start with a mind map. I'm a big mind map user and I start with mind map. I had a client just the other day, she came to me, she said, well, I have some ideas for books but I'm not sure which one to focus on and I don't know, you know exactly what I'm going to do and we started, we, we did a two hour session um, and we screen shared and I created this mind map and it started out with just, you know, what was her passion and her purpose and, you know, how could we combine that into something and then we worked on brainstorming some book ideas and we went from there into her brain branding, you know, how could these books actually come into some kind of a brand for her? Could she be a such and such expert or, you know, and what could a website be called? And we did all of this and then we went over to the other side of the map. We said, okay, so now which book would we do first? Which book would we do second? Which, um, you know, what could your, what, what would we call your website? And now, and now what's your to-do list? What are we going to work on now, you know, in order to get you moving towards a goal? You know, we're going to we're going to mind map one of the books and we're going to, you know, we, we picked a book. Okay, this is the first one. We'll mind map that, 
that one out and we're going to you know get contact some web designers and we're gonna you know you know you're gonna keep fleshing out your branding ideas and you know all of this because that's where it starts it starts with one idea and you you begin to to, to move out and and the planning is just this huge web of you know in each one of those areas the branding and the blog and the books and all of that be, are, could can be totally separate plans yep. it's really exciting and interesting really really exciting and interesting is that Carmen's co comment yes yeah I love it I was just thinking you, you could turn that around and put marriage you know like what if people actually did a plan for their marriage? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's so funny? Just real quick, I was watching this show the other day with um. Oh my goodness, what is her name? Oh my goodness, uh, I'll think of it in a second. But Winter, Susan Winter, and she said that if you know you're at like my age, I'm not a spring chicken. So because I have kind of a um, alpha personality that maybe I should approach dating like a startup. <laughs> Decide exactly how I wanted to do it, what I was looking for, what I was willing to put into it and everything. And that may sound weird, but I when think you think about it, it's a great idea. It actually, yeah, it, it it is. Now I just have to figure get the 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 will to go do it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that so was, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that was something we thought we were going to mention was the startup issue. That's right. That's right. Go ahead and mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons to do a business plan is, especially if you're going to self-publish, is that um, that that you are a startup company. So independent publishers are startups. So if you traditionally publish, what you're doing is you're actually um, you're going to create a business plan and you're going to turn it into a book proposal. And the reason you're doing that is because you're poaching a uh, an agent first and then a publisher probably, unless you go to a small publisher on your own. Um, and you're actually looking for venture capital. You're actually going to them and saying, I have an idea and I want you to back it financially for me. I want you to be my venture capital partner. And they're looking at you and saying, are you a good partner, business partner? And so your book proposal is your way to convince them you have a viable product. But if you self-publish, you don't have that. You don't have that person there to, you know, that publishing company to vet out your product and say, yes, I think this is viable, and yes, I want to be your partner, and I'll back your project. So you have to create a business plan, and you have to use that business plan to convince yourself that your product is viable and that it's worth you investing your money in and your time in mm -hmm. so that you know that it's a good investment for you and then you need that business plan because you are a startup company you now become an entrepreneur and you are not just a writer anymore you are a writerpreneur or an authorpreneur with a startup business and that business is a publishing company and that's how you have to approach this because if you don't then you are really kind of setting yourself up to fail because every startup company needs a business plan at that at another part when you in that particular section of the book i believe it was you also mentioned um, to look at it from all the different uh, per different perspectives, you know, look at it how an account would look at it, look how a stockholder would look at it, look how um, somebody from the bank would look at it, look at your business plan from all the different perspectives and see, you know, if it still holds the same value. Right. Well, and I think also going back to what we talked about at the very beginning in terms of your commitment and, um, you know, this is when you really have to ask yourself whether you're cut out for this. Because if you want to be an independent publisher, you have to be cut out for it. You have to be cut out to run a business and to do the, all the project management and, and all of that. Because I don't recommend subsidy publishers where you know, you're, you're going to an author house or one of these where you're going to pay a lot of money for a bunch of services that are not high quality and you're giving away your rights and you're, um, you know, there's all kinds of things. I don't really even want to get into that. Just don't do it. Sure. You know, you want to do it. The, you want to do it the right way, and you want to use, you know, create space or preferably lightning source, and you want to, um, you know, you want to create a book and hire your designers and your editors and all that stuff, and um, that's really the right way to do it. I mean, there are some done for you services which are fine. 
Um, I have some I recommend. If you don't want to do the project management, then fine. Hire a done-for-you service that's high quality. You will pay good money for it, but it will be well worth your while. You don't have to. You still have a business. You're still a business, but you can get someone to do your book for you and get it up on Amazon and Smashwords and you know all that stuff. You can get someone to do it, and they'll do a good job for you. But um, but you have to decide whether you're up for that. If if you are up to be a publisher. And if you're not, then you might have to make some hard decisions. Whether first of well, one may be that you're gonna go the traditional route, which means you have to have a really big platform and you know you have to do some other things. Or you may have to decide that you're gonna publish a book and not, you know, have the kind of sales or or that maybe this isn't for you. You know, but but there's some hard choices to make because it's it, it's not for everybody. It's hard work. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of good books out there that never make it just because of poor planning. It's not because yeah. the book's not good. And that's a shame. That's a real shame. That's one of the reasons in the very beginning I wanted to do this show is because I think that a, a lot of writers get lost um, in the process. And that's just because they don't have the tools and resources and the knowledge to keep them moving forward. So. And that's what uh, we do at that independent publishers of New England and people like Nina do, you know, is we mm -hmm. we sort of help sure guide, guide them, them and, and give them, you know, absolutely raise raise mm -hmm. the um, yep. quality and on that note, I did not realize time flew by so fast. It was so much information. Um, Nina, let me go ahead and start with you. Would you like to tell us about your website, what you have going on, where we can find you? And sure. um, I don't think I told you too. I do do an accompanying blog post with this show that lists out all the resources that are mentioned and everything, so people have something they can hold on to. So, Great. but go Great. ahead. Mm -hmm. So um, the easiest place to find me is at ninaamir.com, uh, n-i-n-a-a-m-i-r.com. But uh, the blogs that will be the most helpful to everyone are writenonfictionnow.com and uh, how to blog a book.com. And then, of course, the resources, you know, you've heard them about my, my books. Uh, the author training manual is probably the best one for, for this. And um, uh, all the resources that I've already mentioned, if you put those in the blog post, they'll have those. And there'll be, there'll be a new ebook, as I said, coming out, uh, the um, nonfiction book proposal uh, demystified. And that'll be a big help for anyone, especially if they're using my template. I will definitely be on board with that one. <laughs> you can count on me clicking your link. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, it's a really short little ebook that just basically goes through every section of a book proposal and just says this is what it is and this is what you put in there. And it's, you know, no reading long books, just very simple. And if you have awesome. my easy schmeasy book proposal template, it, it, you know, they dovetail. So, okay. But yeah, so find me at ninamir.com and let me know if I can help you. All right. And Charlotte, what about you? What do you what's going on with you? <laughs> Other than <Rowan. laughs> what isn't going on with me? I just want to know how to pronounce the uh, acronym for National Nonfiction Writing Month. Oh, you're gonna make me do that. Nanon Firimo. <laughs> Nanon Firimo. Oh. My God. Well, That's you know, so there was an easier one. So for many, many years, it was just the Write Nonfiction in November Challenge. And that we just called WinFin. And I like that a lot better. Yeah. But then, you know, everybody did NaNoWriMo. And so it was the National, non uh, National Fiction Writing Month. And so we had to, you know, have this national something. So it was the National yeah, yeah, Nonfiction yeah. Writing funny. Month. So then I had That's to cool. do Nan, 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 Nan. Yeah, so now we're <laughs> Nan, Nan, Fi, Rimo. And nobody says it. So when people have trouble with it, I say, just call it Winfin, and we'll know what you're talking about. <laughs> and where, where are you located? I'm in Northern California. Oh, okay. Los Gatos, California. Los Gatos. Oh, beautiful area. Beautiful area. You know, we are at, at Independent Publishers of New England. We're um, we're planning uh, some book shows for the fall where we represent our, our we do uh, cooperative marketing with our members' books. So we take them to the national uh, the uh, book expo. New, New England Library Association uh, and the New England Independent Booksellers Association, and then we have a couple others. There. There's a Vermont uh, agents and writers, authors made agents, and so we, we kind of that's one of the major um, 
member benefits that we have. So we're planning all that stuff. It's IPNE.org. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about next week's show. Next week, which is a, I think this has worked out well, but this is what the subject is next week, is branding. How to build your uh, writing brand. And Carolyn Capern is going to be my guest. She uh, is a wonderful, um, she does a lot of copywriting. She's a, a writer and then she also uh, likes to build stories for brands. So she's going to be really able to speak to that very well. And that is the, that's the first show on branding. And I'm not going to do them all in a row. But that's branding and building a platform is not an hour's worth of material. It is, there's, there's a lot more to it. So that'll just be the introduction on how important it is and why you really need to get your head around the fact that you have to do that if you want to be successful. So, and on that note, I think we're going to go. Nina, thank you so much. You're thank very you, welcome. everybody in the audience, for joining us tonight. And Charlotte, as usual, thank you so much. You're and uh, you'll have a wonderful evening. Thank you.